Hey guys, welcome to this week's video. This week I'm going to be doing my June wrap up. So I'll be talking about all the books that I read in June, as well as all of the crochet projects that I did in June. This month I read seven books. And the first one that I read is Bloodmarked by Tracy Dion. This is the second book in the Legendborn series. And I gave this book four stars. The first book, Legendborn, is about the main character, Brie and she goes to college at UNC Chapel Hill and she joins a society that she thinks can help her find some answers about her mother's death. The society happens to be the descendants of the Knights of the Round Table. So it kind of goes through that whole story, um, but this is the second one. I don't want to say too much about this so that I don't spoil the first one. I did really enjoy this. I gave it four stars. There was more of my favorite character. His name is Selwyn. He's right here on the cover and I just loved seeing him interacting with the main character. Um, this book had some new characters and some new settings that were really interesting, so I really enjoyed that. And also you get to learn a lot more about Bree's mom's heritage, so Bree's heritage, and a lot more about the Order as well. And it just gets really exciting, so I'm looking forward to the rest of this series for sure. The next book I read is Garden City by John Mark Comer. The little tagline here is work, rest, and the art of being human. I did a little buddy read with two of my friends on this book. We all read it together and had a few little FaceTime meetings about this book and I really enjoyed it. This is the only nonfiction that I read this year. It's Christian nonfiction and it talks about how your work so like your career and your job relate to your faith, um, which is a topic that I think about a lot. And I just really enjoyed his take on it. And it gave me some new perspective changes on my faith in general and just how my life as a whole relates to my faith. And I would really recommend this book for people who think about that topic about how your job and career relate to your faith. But I did not rate this book because I don't really know how to rate nonfiction. So, but I really enjoyed it and I recommend it and I kind of annotated and highlighted and stuff like that. Then I read a book on my Kindle. I read Beach Read by Emily Henry. And this book is about January. Her dad passes away and she finds out that he has a lake home and he gives her the keys and so she goes there for the summer because she wants to sell it but she also wants to spend some time there trying to finish up her book she's an author and the guy next door his name is gus is actually somebody that she went to college with he's also an author and so they um, kind of have this deal going on where they're going to try to write a book in the other person's typical genre so i thought that premise was really interesting um, I loved the setting, just being at the lake and it's kind of like small town vibes a little bit. And it's very summery, so I recommend it to read in the summer. I thought the, the characters in this book felt very real, like the things that they were dealing with and talking about were very real topics and I just felt like there were real people that I was like reading about their life. I liked the author subplot a lot too because when I read I think a lot about what the author's purpose was for putting in certain aspects in the book so it was cool to read about like how they do research and how they turn like their personal stories we kind of put that in the book as well so that was really cool there was kind of a miscommunication in part of the book which bugs me sometimes <laughs> because I just want them to like talk about it and get past it and that was kind of the conflict in the book. I would also say it's not a very rom-com. Like people say that it's a romantic comedy, but I feel like it's more of a just a romance with some entertaining dialogue. And I thought it had more depth than like a typical rom-com would. So I do recommend this book. I gave it four stars. The next book that I read is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. I have talked about this book a few times. Um, I read it in a reading vlog and also talked about it in my mid-year wrap-up. Gave this book five stars and it's the best book that I've read so far this year. Um, this is about Addie LaRue. 
She was born in like the 1600s and she is arranged to marry someone that she does not want to marry. And she really wants to just experience life and travel. And so she ends up accidentally making a deal with like a dark god to live forever. But the catch to this deal that she makes is that nobody can remember her. So every time they interact with her, they'll like turn around or go through a door or something and they just completely forget who she is or why she's there. And so I thought that premise was really interesting. It makes for some very interesting situations with Addie LaRue. The premise was very well executed as well. I think sometimes when you like read the back of the book, you think, oh, that's interesting. And then sometimes you read the book and it doesn't really pan out very well. But this one, I think she did a great job. This book, there's not a ton of action. The plot is more just about like Addie LaRue's life and like how she deals with this curse that she has. But I think that the characters are so interesting that it doesn't really matter. It didn't really matter to me. It didn't feel slow or dragged out or boring at all to me. I was just very interested in how Addie LaRue's life went and just her like inner thoughts and stuff like that. So it was so good. I highly recommend. Then in the same reading vlog, I read A Winter's Promise by Christelle Davos. This book I found out was translated from French, which is interesting. And I think it's the first book in the Mirror Visitor series. I think there's currently four books, there could be more. But I gave this book 3.5 stars. The main character, Ophelia, is arranged to marry a man from a different part of the world. So in the world that she lives in, um, it's set in the future where the world has been broken apart into all these different pieces. So she has to travel to another like piece of the earth where they have this whole different culture and this whole super intricate like political system when she goes there she has to she has to interact with all of these like higher class people there's a lot of interesting characters in this book this book was very unique i have never really read a book like this before um the plot was kind of disjointed to me i don't know if it was just because it was the first book in a series but i felt like there were multiple different conflicts that didn't really like connect to each other um like something would happen and then it would get resolved and then something else would happen so it didn't really flow very well to me i did really enjoy it and i was interested the whole time that i was reading it but i wasn't super connected to the characters I just didn't feel like the emotions or struggles that they were having were very relatable to me. I still think it was good. I don't think I'm going to continue the series, but I am glad that I read it. Then I read Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. This is a contemporary romance book and it is about Macy who grew up going to this like weekend home with her dad, like whenever they wanted to get away, they would go to this weekend home. And the neighbor at that weekend home is Elliot. And so she grows up with Elliot pretty much, seeing him on the weekends and holidays and stuff like that. And they become best friends. And the story is told in a then and now perspective where it talks about Elliot and Macy getting to know each other and growing up going through middle school and high school, but it also flashes forward to 10 years in the future where they're seeing each other again for the first time in 10 years um, because they didn't speak for 10 years. And you don't know why the flash forward scene is like them like rekindling their friendship and relationship and stuff like that. Um, and you're, it's kind of leading up to this moment where you find out why they didn't speak for so long. I gave this book four stars. I did really enjoy it. The characters, because of how she wrote them to like grow up with each other and be childhood best friends, felt like they really belonged together. They really like understood each other. And I think it's pretty hard to write that sort of connection between characters in a book. So she did, they, I guess Christina Lauren is two authors, but they did a really good job with that part of it because it 
I did feel that connection between the characters. I also really enjoyed the then and now timeline. I think that kept things moving um, really well. When you were in one perspective, you were like excited to get to the next one and it just like really kept you reading and it gave it a little bit of diversity between the chapters. So that was really fun. They did, the characters did have some conversations that I felt like it would be too awkward for teenagers to talk about. And they kind of felt a little bit unnecessary, like the topics of their conversations just didn't seem like they needed to have those conversations. That was really my only criticism, otherwise I really enjoyed this. I thought it was a really sweet love story and yeah, I would recommend. The last book that I read in June is The Traitor's Kiss by Erin Beattie. This book is about Sage and she becomes the apprentice to the matchmaker in their kingdom. So she is given the job to like help this matchmaker choose brides to go to this event where they're supposed to meet their husbands and stuff like that. And she has to pretend to be one of the brides as well while they're like on this journey to get to the event. And she meets a soldier along the way and then she ends up becoming a spy for the soldiers. And they're staying in certain households along the way of like higher lords um, and Sage is helping the soldiers spy on these lords in the households because the kingdom is on a brink of war that these lords are involved in. This book I gave three stars. I don't know if this makes sense. <laughs> when you're reading a fiction book, you kind of need to be convinced that the characters are like realistic, even if like the events obviously are not realistic. You kind of have to have that like convincing <laughs> aspect of the book to, for it to be like enjoyable and for you to really feel that escapism of like being in a different world and I just didn't get that with this book. I'm not sure what it was. I feel like it was just the writing didn't feel super mature to me. I do think this is the author's debut novel so that could be the reason but the plot was pretty good. I just think the characters weren't supporting it very well even though the plot like was interesting and it was like a good driving force for the book the characters actions and especially their dialogue just didn't feel very like convincing to me so i don't think i'll be continuing this series i'm glad that i was able to read it and knock one book one more book off my TBR. That's the last book that I read in June for crochet projects. The first thing that I made is a book cover for my sister. Just like a little sleeve to put your book in in case you're like putting it in your bag, it'll protect the pages. And I did surface crochet on this and I put her name on it and I thought that was really cute. Surface crochet is fun for me because I feel like it adds a cool creative element. So you have a lot more like freedom of what design you'll put on there. I also made a set of coasters for my friend. She asked me to get earth tones. So I got these like muted colors and I really enjoyed making these. She kind of gave me free reign of like mix and match. <laughs> so that was really fun. I think coasters are like the perfect size project uh, because you feel very accomplished and it only takes like less than an hour to make one coaster and i would also honestly recommend making coasters as your first crochet project if you're interested in making crochet because they are small but they're also useful and they're also a fun just a fun way to mix and match and be creative in that way and then i also made with the same yarn as the coasters i made these bookmarks they, they still have their ends that I need to sew in, but I just thought that the pattern was really fun. I love the colors. So I think this pattern is by Rich Textures Crochet, but I like to make them, to use them in different books and match them to the covers and give them to my friends and things like that. So I made, I also crocheted these on the plane. I like to crochet on the plane because it calms me. <laughs> when I'm feeling a little bit anxious. Those are all the crochet projects that I did in June.
But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope that you guys come back next week for whatever video I'll be posting. Leave me a comment what your favorite book that you read in June was. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye! Thank you.